Hi, my name is Brent Mason, and today I'm going to discuss with you how to perform a spun hematocrit. Today I will be showing the equipment needed to perform a spun hematocrit, the techniques used, and how to read the results once the spun hematocrit is complete. Um, can anybody tell me what a spun hematocrit is used for? A spun hematocrit is like a percentile volume of, of blood in a little test tube, which is a dir direct reflection of how much red blood cells are in Alright, good. Well, um, I guess first let's get started with the equipment needed to perform the spun hematocrit. Um, first and foremost, you're going to need protective gloves, lab coats, so that you protect yourself from whatever the patient may or may not have. Um, next, you're going to need a, a blood specimen. If you're performing the specimen from a finger stick or something, you're going to need heparinized tubes, but today we're going to perform it from a EDTA tube, a purple top tube. So the micro capillaries that we're going to be using are just regular capillaries. The next thing that we're going to be needing is the clay sealer. This will be used to cap the end of the micro, micro capillary so that we can put it into the centrifuge. And this is a capillary centrifuge. Next, we're going to need uh, gauze and the disinfectant to clean up afterward. And the graph so that we can read the spun hematocrit after it is completed. All right, first we will be taking the blood sample and getting it into the capillary. The way you're going to the way you're going to want to do this is you're going to want to tilt the blood vial to the point where you almost feel like you're going to pour it out on yourself and that's one of the things that always gets me and you're going to want to put the capillary to it at about the same angle so that the blood is drawn into the capillary tube. You're going to want to get the blood about three-fourths of the way into the tube and it's going to look like, I don't know if you can see that zoomed in, but after you get the blood into the tube you're going to want to go ahead and wipe off the outside layer to get off all the blood from the the tube itself, and you're going to want to place your finger over the end so that the blood doesn't move around, and you're going to want to stick one of the ends into the clay sealer. Now that the capillary tube is sealed, you're going to run everything in duplicates, so we're going to go ahead and put this in the centrifuge so it can not be in the way, and you're going to want to remember what spot you put it in. We're going to put this one in 15. And you're going to want to make sure that the clay sealer that you put is on the outside ring of the hematic or of the centrifuge. That way, when it spins, the blood doesn't come out and make a mess that you have to clean up. When you're doing a spun hematocrit, you want to make sure that you do it in duplicates, just in case you mess up. You can see that you need to redo it. You need to have some consistent results. So we'll go ahead and make a second one. Hopefully as smoothly as I made the first one. Okay. And again, you're going to want to wipe off the outside and cap the end that you didn't have in the files so as to not contaminate the, the clay. And we'll put this one in opposite from the one we just placed so to keep it balanced. So this one's going to be in three. You're going to want to make sure that you push both the capillary tubes toward the outside. You're going to want to not forget this. This screws on top. and close and spin for five minutes. Since this is only a 10 minute lecture, we went ahead and did some beforehand. And you can see that there are three layers to the capillary tube. 
you have the plasma layer up top, you have the white buffy coat layer here, and the red blood cells are packed down at the bottom. Okay, um, can anybody tell me what the normal range of a spun hematocrit would be? For guys it's 40 to 50, for, <clears throat> for women it's 36 to 44. Okay, good. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your chart, and you can see that the chart has this bottom line. I don't know if you can see that. You have the bottom line here, and this bottom line is going to line up with the clay that you just did, the top of the clay. And the top part of the plasma is going to line up with this top part. So we'll go ahead and line that up like that. And your percent hematocrit is going to be where the red blood cells start. So this looks like it's going to be about uh, 45%, which falls into our normal range. So uh, I've got another sample here. Um, would you like to try? Forty-six. Okay, so our first one was forty-five, and our second run was forty-six. Those are close enough that we don't have to rerun the test, and we call this patient having a normal spondymatocrit. After this is done, we go ahead and take our tubes, and since these are plastic, we're just going to go ahead and put it in the autoclave bag, and we'll cap our blood and go ahead and save it just in case we need to run further tests and proceed to clean up the workstation. Um, to sum it up, let's go ahead and recap on what a spun hematocrit is for. A uh, spun hematocrit is to tell the percentage of red blood cells in the patient and um, normal ranges, as Jesse said earlier, are from 40 to 50 in males and 36 to 44 percent in females. And there you have it. After you're done, you disinfect your area and throw away your gauze and you're done.